So what exactly is conformity? Well, it's the act of matching attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors to group norms. We see it every day, especially in public settings like school. An individual conforms by changing oneself to fit in with the majority's behavior to avoid standing out. The norms aren't like laws or rules, usually they're implicit, meaning it's unspoken, leading the individual to figure out themselves. Our group decided to test the idea of conformity out on the escalators. Instead of facing forward while using the escalator, we will face backwards and see if anyone will conform to match our behavior. The ideal setting for this experiment is the Westfield South Center Mall due to its numerous escalators all over the building. To start off our experiment, we decided to use the escalator leading up to the AMC theater on the third floor. We felt like it could get a lot of good data since lots of children, teenagers, but also adults like to go catch a movie. We see that in this particular clip, the man sees some of our actors facing towards him, which makes him uncomfortable, which is why he decides to look at the big display behind him. In this one, the girl in front of Christina displays selective attention by having the ability to continue on her phone conversation without getting distracted. If we keep an eye on the man in a black shirt approaching upstairs to our actors, we see that a few moments later, he turns most of his body backwards and therefore he has conformed. It was observed that people who ride the escalators with someone else are in a group are least likely to notice anything abnormal in front of them. Finally, a little girl has conformed after seeing Christina turn her back around, but it only lasted a few seconds since her mother did not approve of it. This man in the blue and white plaid shirt displayed what we would call the actor-observer effect due to his face expression. He thinks we're doing this for the enjoyment. The girl right here feels intimidated by us since we're older, but doesn't show it. We know that she feels uncomfortable because later when we asked for an interview, she declined. Due to a sudden rush of people, our other actors were unable to get on the escalator, leaving Christina alone. However, the kid in the green shirt did conform even though there wasn't three or more people. In this portion, the three males in front of our actors seem to have a dispositional attribution about them because of their stern face expressions. It seems like they're judging our behavior to correlate with our personality. Yeah, I'm different. I'm different. Yeah. Moving our experiment to a department store, our group went to JCPenney's. While making our way upstairs, we were surprised to see that this kid on the right saw the three of us facing backwards and decided to do the same. Some adults seemed to see our experiment as a situational attribution, thinking that we had a real reason for our actions. JC Penney's was once again the main target for our additional data on Friday afternoon due to the flexibility and space available. We also brought our friend Alfred with us to join. A few moments later, our actors were making our way down the escalator when a kid in a red shirt joins and although looking unsure, he also faces backwards, even displaying a chameleon effect with his posture. We decided to catch up with him later for his input. What was your reaction when you saw the people standing backwards? So I felt kind of awkward because everybody was turning around and I didn't know what to do. It felt kind of confusing also. So. To test things up a bit, it was suggested that we test social norm influence. 
by standing on the left side of the escalator, which also breaks social norms since the left side is for people who want to pass. The teenager in this one feels awkward, but also could be in a rush as she decides to walk fast up the escalator. On a different one, we revert back to standing backwards. The two men here clearly see what's going on as one of them decides to turn back. We decide that he was lying. Anyways, in this one, the girl was caught off guard by Clifford turning around that she dropped her phone. In the majority of the trials we did, we noticed that when we surrounded an individual, they were more likely to have a facial reaction. One individual and his little brother were sitting downstairs and witnessed this experiment, and so we decided to ask for his input. He displayed what we would call an implicit attitude since he's seen this before. After that, we thought we had enough data for our experiment and decided to call it a day. When we went back in the videos and counted everything, 4 out of 55 kids conformed while 1 out of 95 adults had conformed. Therefore, 7.3% of the children conformed while only 1.1% of the adults conformed which leads us to the conclusion that our hypothesis was proven correct. Children and teenagers are more likely to conform than adults. Rainbows, sunshine, go.